Welcome to this uh, Saturday evening question and answer session. Uh, a little bit of listening practice, a little bit of conversation practice for you. So for those of you that don't know, I am Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. Uh, if you're new here, you should subscribe, by the way, uh, and give me a thumbs up if my lessons help you. Um, but yes, I like to, on a Saturday night, just let me check the technical aspect of this to me. Saturday evening. Looks like I'm talking on the screen, so that is great. So a few things before we get started. Number one, if you have questions um, about the English language, please uh, ask them using the form that I'm going to paste into the chat right now. So if you have questions, post them there. If you have pronunciation questions, if you have questions about uh, something that you want to be able to say in English, that's great. Um, sometimes though, I get a lot of questions about English grammar. I don't know if a listening and conversation practice lesson like this is the best place to do that. So let's look at pronunciation. Ask me questions about how to say certain things. That would be awesome. Uh, and we'll go from there. So I just want to say hi to everyone who's watching so far. A lot of people in the chat. I'm not going to shout out all the names because there are so many of you. But thank you so much for being here. Uh, as you can see, it is a beautiful Saturday evening here in Ontario, Canada. Uh, I'm really happy to do a live stream again from home. I hope the quality of the live stream is good enough for you to learn and practice some English. So again, before we get started, if you have questions, uh, if you look down there in the chat, um, I think the chat's over there on my screen, it might be below on your screen, I'm not sure, um, I would be happy to answer some of them. So hello, hello to everyone who's watching. Um, I'm going to take the first question, we have a few here. So what I do is I paste your question into the chat. So you can see here that Bodan says, Hi, what does the word supersede mean and how do I use it correctly? So you'll notice when I read your questions, I correct the English as well. So I won't always read it word for word because I will read it the way an English speaker would actually say it. Um, so supersede means when something takes over the number one spot. So if um, your favorite football team was always the second team in the league and eventually they win enough that they supersede. So they become more important, they become higher in the ranking. Um, we can use this for a lot of things. Sometimes um, things in life supersede other things. So for instance, my family is more important than my YouTube channel, sorry. So my family supersedes my YouTube channel. Hopefully that made some sense. Let me find the next question. I'm not sure this is a question, but it's from Fernando. He says, oh no, I just figured out I don't have money to pay the bill. I should have gotten my wallet from home and I'm in a restaurant. So I don't know if this is actually happening with Fernando, but it sounds like he's out having something to eat uh, and he has forgotten his wallet. Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't really laugh, should I? So anyways, again, if you have questions, post them in the chat. I will try to get to them. Um, if you are asking questions in the chat, it scrolls by so quickly, I can't answer them. So please do use the form, that would be awesome. Uh, and also, I might not get through all the questions today, so we'll see uh, how things go. Next question from Leo, says, Leo from Brazil, Hi Bob, my son is going to Canada in September for a public exchange, oh it's a public exchange service for his school. Could you please give him some advice? So first of all, if he's going to be studying in an English speaking school, I would say don't hang out with the other people who speak Portuguese, okay? Don't hang out with the other people who speak your language. That's the number one piece of advice um, that I give people if they study in another school. Um, make sure that you listen to your teachers and get to know your teachers. In some cultures, teachers aren't very friendly, but in Canada, Teachers are very friendly. They like to know their students. So talk to your teacher at the end of class every day. Um, greet your teacher every day. Be kind to your teacher. Um, I would say buy them gifts, but that's, <laughs> that's your choice. Uh, so that would be, uh, Leo, that would be the advice I would give. Next question here is from Natalie. Could you please clarify the difference in pronunciation between these two words, accept and accept? So it's very slight, right? Like everyone went on the trip except for me. 
except e x c e p t except um, sometimes people want to give me money and i just need to accept the money i need to accept it so one thing you can know is that you can almost say these two words the same in informal english there is a difference but if you're speaking quickly people might not notice okay so that's what i would tell you um, again folks see lots of questions in the chat if you have a question please um, use the form there it helps keep things organized and it makes bob the canadian really really happy um, just let me clear some things out here um, Angie has the next question and it is the most difficult thing for me in english is to use articles correctly the and a or an and pluralization my language lacks articles and pluralization works very differently. So this is a challenge. Um, believe it or not, a lot of listening practice will help you because subconsciously, without thinking, your brain will learn these things, okay? The same with when I was learning French. You're learning to use le or la because there's feminine and masculine nouns. Um, it's a challenge, but listening is one of your best things to do, to listen to native speakers and listen for the an, the a, uh, and the the, uh, and listen for the plurals. And again, I apologize a lot for the English language. Um, that is a challenging, challenging thing to learn. Uh, next question is from Lolly. Lolly asks or says, hi, Bob. Please, what's the difference between motion, movement, and gesture? So if I take my water bottle, and uh, you'll see that, um, let's see, how would I say this? There is movement right now, right? When I'm moving the water bottle, there is movement, and it is in motion when I am moving it. Um, so I can only really give you examples of me using the word. Um, when you watch this video, you'll see that there's a lot of movement of the branches um, when the wind is blowing. They are in motion when the wind is blowing. So those two, hopefully that clarified a bit with some example sentences. For the last one, gesture. Um, so gestures are actually hand signals that mean something. So in English, this means come here. This means stop. Uh, this means awesome or cool. Uh, there's another one I won't do that uh, is a bad word, but uh, hopefully that was a bit of an explanation for you, Lolly. There you go. Uh, next question, let me grab the next question here. Um, from Lolly again, excellent. Says, oh, the pronunciation of want versus won't. So I want to drink some water, want, W-A-N-T, I want to drink some, but I won't drink any right now because people don't like it when I make a slurping sound. But I want to drink water, but I won't. Maybe I will. One sec. Mm, that was good. Okay, next one. Question is from Nelson. Uh, Nelson Vila Mizar says, how long does it take to learn English after at 30 years of age? So if you're 30 years old, um, so a lot just depends on how much time you have every day. So if you're 30 years old and you're married and you have six children uh, and you have a full-time job, it's going to take you longer because you don't have as much time to spend learning English. But if you are 30 years old and maybe you only have one or two children uh, and you only work part-time, you will have more time to dedicate. So. It's hard to say uh, because some people learn English faster than other people as well. But I would say if you spent one hour a day for three years, you would be uh, quite fluent. Uh, as long as you're doing, remember, you're reading, you're writing, you're listening, you're speaking, and you're learning vocabulary every day. Those are the things uh, that you need to focus on. Let me post the link again for you folks. If you have questions, uh, please ask them over there. Um, let me grab the next question here. Uh, the next question is from Andy. Oh, let's see how this one goes. Bob the Canadian isn't always great at explaining these. Andy says, if I do not say when something happened in the past, may I use present perfect? Example, John Doe has crashed his car. Um, so I was going to skip this one because I don't like doing grammar examples. But um, if you do not say when something happened, so if I said yesterday John Doe crashed his car, or if I said John Doe crashed his car yesterday, or if I say John Doe crashed his car, they are all correct. That is how you would say 
that John Doe crashed his car. Hopefully he's okay. We'll see. Uh, anyways, folks, again, uh, grammar questions, not my strong suit. And this is mostly a listening conversation practice. Uh, so try to ask me questions that, um, if you need to learn grammar, there's lots of videos for learning grammar, right? So uh, here we go. Uh, Matthew has the next question. These are great questions tonight, people. Um, hi, Matthew says, hi, teacher. So my question is, do you think of a person who studied American English and kind of like never heard any other accent may have some problems or trouble, we would probably say trouble there, understanding other native speakers? Possibly. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm Canadian. I speak Canadian English. I can understand people from the UK, from Ireland, from Australia, from the Southern United States. I can understand them all fine, but sometimes they have one or two words that are different and that can kind of trip you up. When you're tripped up, it means it's hard to understand something. So um, yes, so in some ways, uh, you if you only learn to understand one person speaking, it might be a little bit of a challenge, but uh, in terms of the, the structure of the sentences, everything's the same. It's just an accent that you have to adapt to a little bit. So hopefully that helps you. Um, that was from Matthew. Thank you very much. Next question is from Wagner. Thanks for the question, Wagner. Wagner says, how does the expression figure out work? So when you figure something out, you solve it. So if I have a math problem, one plus one, I have to figure out what the answer is, okay? So I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to solve it. I'm going to, um, I guess I'm just using figure out over and over again. But when you figure something out, it means you solve it. If you have a puzzle um, or if someone tells you a riddle, that's a good one. You need to figure out what the answer is. Hopefully that helps you a bit. Next question is from Papi Chulo. Hi, Papi. You were here yesterday. Good to see you again. Um, let's see here. Papi Chulo says, Bob, could you explain the phrasal verb to come down to something? So I'm not sure if you're using the, the verb to come down with something. So if you come down with something, it means that you're getting sick. So I can come down with a cold. I can come down with the flu. That is how I would use that to come down to something. Um, the only th example I can think for that is if you wanted a certain price for something and I didn't want to pay it. I might come down to your price. So you wanted $10. I only wanted to pay. I wanted, oh, sorry. You wanted to pay $10 for something and I wanted to charge 20. I could come down to your price, but I think you meant come down with, um, I think, I'm not sure. It sounded good though. I think that was a great explanation. Um, let's see. The next question is from Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Says, hello, sir. I do not know how to say how to ask in English correctly when I need someone to help me uh, or if it's convenient for them. So if you need someone to help you, so you're, you're just out in public and you need to ask someone, you start by saying, excuse me, would you mind helping me with whatever you need help with? So let's say you need help carrying your groceries. You would say, excuse me, would you mind helping me carry my groceries to the car? Or excuse me, would you mind lending me $20? No, don't, don't do that one. But you would use that conditional would, like would you mind? Um, you could also say, could you? So you could say, excuse me, could you help me find the bank? Okay, so those two um, add a degree of politeness uh, to the question. So that's how I would do that. Uh, let's see here. Again, folks, I see uh, people asking a lot of grammar questions. Let's try to keep the conversation light. I know grammar is difficult for you, um, but uh, here's a question where Giselle, Giselle says, what book um, or which book would you recommend for a level B1? Um, so I would recommend at level B1 that you look at the New York Times bestseller list for fiction or nonfiction. Uh, because at level B1, you should be able to read anything that's on the bestseller list. You don't need to read young adult fiction. You can read what I'm reading, okay? I'm not reading anything right now though, but you can read a book that a normal English speaker would read. I'm a B1, C1 French speaker, and I can read any French book. I might have to look up some words once in a while, but um, that's the way it goes. Um, Jesus says, 
<laughs> this is a... Uh, so Jesus says, what up, up, up? I want to ask you, how can I know if my accent is good? I don't know what to ask you. So that's a tricky one. How do you know if your accent is good? You need to find a native speaker uh, and you need to ask them. Um, so you need to have a conversation. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I see a lot of people um, posting that they really enjoy my videos. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to do a few things. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. There's a little thumb up button somewhere, somewhere around here. Uh, and share my videos with other people. I love it. The more people that watch, the better, uh, the more I like it. It's kind of fun to know that. And uh, I was going to say something else. Subscribe, like, share. Oh, leave a comment. Although there's so many comments now, I do have trouble answering them all. So uh, let's see here. Um, I think I answered this one. We just did Jesus. We're going to go to the next one. This is from Juan. He says, Juan says, what is your motivation to make uh, these English learning videos? So what is my motivation? So I have always liked technology uh, ever since I was a little kid. My first computer I got when I was 12. My parents bought me a computer. I had to share it with my brother. Um, and all along the way, I have always loved using computers. It's a lot of fun for me. Uh, so when I got this MacBook, it had iMovie on it and I wanted to practice making some movies. I hadn't really done a lot of movie making, so I made a movie and I thought, what should I make it on? Um, and I always wanted to try YouTube as well, so I thought, I'll make a video to help people learn English. I am a language teacher, I teach French, uh, so I thought, there's a lot of people in the world that want to learn French, but there's a lot of native French speakers teaching French. So I don't want to teach French, but I am a native English speaker who knows how to teach a language. So I decided I would start a YouTube channel. I really just started it to learn how to do it, but then people started watching my videos and they liked them, so I made more. So I just get some joy out of it. I think that's uh, that would be my explanation. Genre Genre is here. Thanks for the super chat on yesterday morning, Jean, Jean, Genre Genre. Uh, what is the difference between fun and funny. So when something's fun, it's enjoyable to do. So for instance, going swimming is fun. Uh, driving a jet ski or a sea doo is fun. Um, hanging out with friends is fun. But funny means that it is something you laugh at. So if I tell a joke, I'm funny. If it's enjoyable to hang out with me, if it's enjoyable to be with me, then I am a fun person. But if I tell a lot of jokes and I make people laugh, then I am a funny person. So that's how that one would go. Let me paste the link again for folks. Um, let's see here. Next question is from Hind says, hi teacher, how can I practice my English? So I mentioned it earlier and hopefully all of you are doing this. You need to read every day. You need to write every day. You need to listen every day, even if it's just music. You need to speak every day, even if you're just speaking to yourself and you need to learn some new vocabulary. Uh, if you did this for one hour every day, um, if you disciplined yourself and plan to do this, you would do really, really well. Um, let's see here. This next question is from Kyle or Chow. Could you say a little bit about your motivation to make great videos for us? Because you have a farm to take care of, family, and another profession. So again, I always need to have a hobby. This is kind of my hobby. So I do work hard during the day. Um, I do relax when I need to. I, I do play with my kids a lot. And then in the middle time, in the in-between time of all that, and I do spend lots of time with my wife, um, and I do work on the farm. I think I said all this. I do just like to do something for fun. So making videos and doing YouTube for me is quite uh, enjoyable. I really, really like doing it. So that would be my motivation. So folks, I know some of you, um, you realize I'm getting a little behind in the questions. That's just life. Uh, that's gonna happen. Um, I'll try to keep up as best I can, but sometimes I fall behind. But here's the next question. Uh, Alessandro says, why the difference go to the beach, go to church, or go downtown? So you're asking why we didn't put the the there. So we, we say go to the beach, 
and we say go to church, we say go to uh, go downtown. Oh yeah, I don't know. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Because we say things like, I need to go to the grocery store or I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to stop by the school. I'm going to pick the kids up from school. So again, it's just something that you need to listen to. Uh, sometimes we put the the in front, sometimes we don't. There's probably a rule about it and I just don't know it because I'm a native speaker. So um, that's a tricky one. Very, very tricky. Um, so again, folks, if you have questions, use the form. You can do it. I know you can. Uh, sorry, Alessandro, if that explanation wasn't great. I'm better with uh, pronunciation explanations. Adrian says, pronunciation of the words studying, where, and were. Thank you, teacher. So studying. Today, you are all studying English right now by watching this. So you are studying. So that is how we pronounce that word, studying. Um, if you were wondering where my water bottle is, my water bottle is right here. So that's how we would use the word where. Where, where's my water bottle? It's right here. And then were. So yesterday we were studying English. We, there was a live stream yesterday morning and a lot of us were studying English. We were learning about travel. There, I almost forgot what yesterday's lesson was about, but we were studying travel. Hi, Jen. Jen's just waving right now. Uh, let's see. Next one is from Catherine. Catherine says, hello, sir. Could you explain to me in what situation we would use the words, by the way? So if I'm um, talking about one thing and I want to talk about something else for a little bit, I would use by the way to join them. So if I said, this water is really good, by the way, Jen just walked by. So it's a way to connect two unrelated ideas. Um, so if I was to say, yesterday I did a lesson on travel, uh, a live lesson on travel, by the way, if you were there, some people were happy about it. So I kind of, it's like a connector or a segue to another idea. So it's kind of a filler word is how I would describe it. Um, a word that simply fills in uh, a connection between two things. Uh, Gang Lu Lu Luo, Gang Lu you guys, do you guys laugh at me when I try to pronounce your names? So Gang Luo says, hi Bob, can you say the word Paul and power and how to distinguish them by pronunciation? So Paul is a name in English. I actually have a student named Paul. So P-A-U-L is Paul, Paul. And then power, I'm saying, I'm really accentuating uh, the syllables. Power is something like when you're strong, you have a lot of power. Um, when you plug something into the wall, we say connect it to power. Um, I'm not sure if you knew that, but um, that's how we say Paul and power. So Nixon says, Nixon says, how can I use the phrasal verb shape up? <laughs> so when you need to shape up, it means you need to do a better job. So let's say at work you're really slow and you drop things all the time and you're just not a good worker. Your boss might say, you need to shape up because um, if you don't shape up, we're going to fire you. You're going to lose your job if you don't shape up. So it means if you're working at a certain level and you're not doing a good job, you need to do a better job at your job. Um, so that's what shape up means. And there's a saying, shape up or ship out. Uh, that's an old saying that means, you know, get your act together, do better work, uh, or you're going to be uh, let go. Uh, Douglas is the next question. Thanks, Douglas, for the question. Douglas says, how can I improve my pronunciation? So this is a challenging one. A lot of people want to know how to do this. So there are YouTube videos, and I recommend that you do a search for how to improve my English pronunciation because they'll show you where how to hold your mouth and where to put your tongue when you say certain words that can be really helpful for people um, so i recommend that as number one so do some shadowing of people who are teaching you know when you make the the sound that your tongue sticks out just a tiny bit um, that would be a great thing to do um, let's see here darby jean says darby jean darby jean louise or Darby Jean Louis, depending on how you pronounce it. Hi, Bob. 
Uh, is it possible to learn two languages simultaneously? Yes, but I can't do it. Um, I think some people are really good at learning languages and they can do two at once. I can't. There's just no way that I could do two languages at once. Um, I, can, I can learn one at a time and, that, and that's it. Um, because when, this is going to sound funny, but when I'm near people speaking a different language, I like to start speaking French. Even if they're speaking Chinese or Russian, I, for some reason my mind clicks into language two mode and I start doing that. But some people can. Uh, some people are pretty good at learning more than one thing at a time. Um, I cannot do that at all. Uh, next question is from Rodrigo. Rodrigo from Brazil says, Hi Bob, please, what's the difference between lonely and alone? So alone is a state of being. I am sitting at this picnic table alone, okay? I am by myself. There is no one else here. So I would describe this as I am alone. If you are lonely though, it's a feeling. Um, so even when you are around other people, you can feel lonely. Um, when you feel lonely, um, you feel like no one is talking to you, no one visits you. Um, and so you have a feeling uh, that, and that feeling is loneliness. So you feel lonely. Um, whereas if you're alone, you're just by yourself. I'm quite happy out here by myself, so I'm not too worried. Um, let's see here. A lot of people in the chat saying my videos are excellent. Thank you very much for that. Um, that's awesome. Um, if you are new here again, subscribe, like, do all that youtube -y stuff. Um, also, uh, don't forget to watch this again tomorrow. It'll have subtitles. For those of you that are having some trouble understanding what I'm saying, uh, tomorrow when you watch this video again, if you watch it a second time, it'll have subtitles. It's always good for your learning. Uh, next, Binyam says, what type of person is a cool person? I think everyone in the chat is a cool person. I think anyone that's learning English is a cool person. Um, but in the world, things might be a little different. I think sometimes people think that movie stars are cool people or people who, who are like rock stars, like people who are in a band, like um, Taylor Swift is a cool person or um, Shawn Mendes is a cool person. But for me, I think anyone who is taking time to learn something new is a cool person. That's what, that's what I like. Uh, let me get to the next few questions, folks. Again, if you need to ask a question, there is a link in the description too, by the way. Um, Vanderlei says, what's the difference between to answer and to respond? Thanks. So you asked a question and now I'm going to respond. You asked a question and now I'm going to answer. So they are the same. So you can say, oh, I think I'll respond. It makes you sound a little more intelligent maybe if you use the verb respond, uh, but they mean the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. Um, Irina says, hello everyone. Hello Irina. Um, what is the difference between disappeared and vanish? Thank you in advance. So if I drink all this water, I could say that it disappeared. I could also say that it vanished. So it's the same. I should drink some of this. Um, so it's the same. We don't use the word vanish a lot anymore though. People would recognize it. Um, but generally we say uh, disappeared. It's a lot more common uh, to say dif disappeared. Uh, let's see here. Ange hope you're, I'm saying your name right. Ange says, how difficult was it for you to learn the grammatical gender system of nouns in French as a native English speaker since English lacks them? Very difficult. In fact, I get them wrong all the time. I Sometimes I say la pomme and sometimes I say le pomme and then people look at me funny. So it's very challenging, uh, very, very challenging. Um, I wish that uh, either English had them and they were the same, but that would make it harder for all of you, wouldn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was a challenge for me. Uh, by the way, for those of you that don't know, um, the other thing I think that helps me teach English is that I have learned a second language, okay? J'ai appris le français, so I learned French. I speak it relatively well, but the experience of learning another language has helped me um, to explain ways that you can learn English as well. So I, I'm similar to all of you in that I have learned a language. Clayton says, I hope this message, hi Bob, I hope this message finds you well. How can I improve my listening for the IELTS test? Thanks. 
First of all, do all of the IELTS practice material that you can find. Buy any IELTS practice material that you can find uh, because some of them have practice listening exercises. Also, if you've never taken the test before, the test itself is good practice. I know you want to pass the first time and you want to get an amazing grade the first time, but um, when I took my, I took the test, um, oh, apparently my phone just told me I'm live right now, so <laughs> thanks phone. Um, when I took my, um, so I went to the Alliance Francaise for my French test and I did the CEFR test. The first time I did the test was actually just a great experience because when I did my B2 test, I knew more of what was expected. So um, find practice materials online. Search YouTube for IELTS listening practice tests. That would be a great thing to do as well. Uh, next question. Let's see. How do I pronounce... Hi, Bob. How do I pronounce the letter H when it's aspirated? Do I have to breathe out? I, I don't know how I say it. I just, I just say it. Um, I would recommend that you find a good YouTube video on technique for uh, use, uh, um, pronouncing an aspirated H, okay? Um, because I think it's a little bit challenging to do, uh, and I'm not the best person uh, to teach you that, but that's what I would do. Certainly, you can find a great video that will give you excellent techniques for how to do that. Uh, let's see. Mohammed says, Hi, Bob. Hi, Mohammed. Could you please tell me how to pronounce contagious and give me a sentence on how to use it? So, when I am sick, I could be contagious, which means other people could get sick if I cough on them or if I touch them. So when you have a cold, when your nose is stuffed up or a flu, where your stomach is sore, you could be contagious and then other people can get sick if they are close to you. Um, let's see here, next question from Lolly says, Lolly Lolly says, um, Let's see here. Uh, if I study four hours a day every day, can I hope to become fluent in English in two years? I would say if you study four hours a day every day uh, and you already have a little bit of English knowledge, uh, you could be fairly fluent in one year. It really depends on where you are. If you are in an English speaking country and you are forced to always speak English, you're, gonna, you're going to learn a lot faster. If you're at home though, four hours a day is a remarkable amount. And then remember to balance, right? So you're listening, uh, you're reading, writing, listening, speaking, learning vocabulary. Uh, make sure you're doing all that. Um, that's just a great thing to do. Um, let me see here. I'm just gonna paste the link again. I have a lot of questions uh, to go through tonight, folks. So we'll see how far I get. I'm just going to keep going and hopefully um, we can get through a lot of these. Sorry if you've waited a long time for your question to show up. Uh, Monsef says, what's the difference between let's get started and let's start? Um, nothing. So if I was to say, we got an English lesson here, let's get started. We got an English lesson here, let's start. You can use them interchangeably. They're the same thing. Yeah. Um, I would use let's get started though, because I, I think it means, it feels like it has a bit more energy to it. Um, oh, this is a good one, because I use this word a lot. So Pablo Campos says, what's the difference between people and folks? So I use them the same, and I use them uh, to talk about all of the people who are watching, or to talk about the students in my class. So I'll say to my class when I'm teaching, okay, people, let's get started. Or I'll say, okay, folks, let's get started. It's just a way to address a group of people. Um, so it's not the same as the normal word people. It's actually, you're using it as a name. So you can say, oh, I have a lot of people in my class. But I could also say, okay, people, quiet down, let's get started. Or, okay, people, um, okay, folks, quiet down, um, let's start. I was trying to use the other example with that, but I don't think it worked too well. Anyways, that's how you would do it. Um, that's how you would use those two. Uh, Pablo, that was from Pablo, right? Um, let's see here. Um, there's a few people asking questions in the chat and sometimes people get frustrated. I know there were a few comments last week um, because I didn't answer questions from the chat, but it goes by too quick. Uh, there's a link, use the link, I'll try to get to you. I'll try to get to all the questions uh, that I have to answer. Um, let me just get the next one so we can keep going. Um, 
So this is from Alex, and this is a question that a lot of people learning English have. Alex says, how do you use to and at in an expression? She's mad at me or she's mad to me. So she is mad at you, okay? We do not say the second one. I don't want to say it again because it's wrong. I only like to say English phrases that are correct. So you would say she's mad at me um, or you could say she's angry with me. Doesn't that make it a pain? Like she's mad at me, she's angry with me. Sorry, sorry, English is weird. Um, I should make a t-shirt that says English is weird. That, that would be a good t-shirt, I think. Um, if you think I should make a t-shirt that says English is weird, um, in, the, in the chat, just say yes for me right now. Just say yes, make that t-shirt, English is weird. Um, no, my example would be everything comes down to money. Oh, that's great. So we're going back to Poppy's other question. Uh, his example, his question was using comes down to. Um, so everything comes down to money or everything comes down to having enough money. Everything comes down to enjoying life. It means that at the very basis of everything, at the bottom, what is most important, that's why we say comes down to. So if you were to say, um, if you wanted to, for instance, go on a long trip in order to have fun, it all comes down to taking your time and just enjoying yourself. So it's really the base or the most important thing about it. A lot of people are saying yes in the chat. They want me to make a t-shirt that says um, <laughs> English, is, English is weird or English is crazy or I love English. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Next question, genre genre says, what is ain't? Uh, so this is the same as isn't. So this, um, this is water. This isn't something else. This ain't something else. We don't use the word ain't very much anymore. When I was a kid, people used the word ain't a lot and it's the same as isn't. So ain't equals isn't. You do not need to use the word ain't ever but you should recognize it because people will use that word. Um, let's see here. Hernan says, here we go. Hernan Lit Litio says, what is the topic today? So Hernan, here's how it works. Yesterday, I did a live lesson on travel. The Friday morning live lesson always has a topic. We've done travel, we've done technology, we've done sports. That was a good one. A lot of people watched it. Um, the topic one day was money. So on Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a live lesson and it always has a topic. This is a conversation and uh, pronunciation live lesson. So all we do here is um, there is a link to a form. I take questions. I answer as many questions as I can. I go about an hour and a half and we just enjoy each other's company. So that's what this is. So no topic. I guess that's what I'm saying. There's no actual topic today. Um, Let's see, another question. This is from Josu Ortega. How long does it take to master writing? Ah, oh, interesting. So the more you do one of the five things, the better you'll get at it. So if you do a lot of writing, uh, you will get better at writing. And how long really depends on how much time you put in. But if you spent a whole hour every day writing you in English, you would get really good at it. Um, but I would say it really just depends. But try to do a balance, you know, do your listening, do, do your reading, your writing, your listening, your speaking, your vocab. Uh, try to keep a balance uh, in all those things. Um, let's see here. A few more thank yous in the chat for my other videos. Awesome. I see a few questions in the chat. I've posted the link again. Uh, if you could use that link, that would be awesome. Um, let's see. Is it, oh, this is a good one. Um, how says is it oh is it okay if the if native speakers don't pronounce the t sound in the middle of some words could you get could you give me some examples please um so um in the middle of some words so the best one is often so o f t e n and when we speak really quickly it often sounds like we're not saying the t because we're not really did you hear that it often sounds like we're not saying the T. I should be saying the T, okay? If I was a correct speaker and I was speaking in front of a group of people, I would try to say often. It often sounds like we don't pronounce the C, the, the T. Um, but yeah, often we don't. Did you hear that? Often we don't say the T. So um, 
you'll just have to listen and learn to figure out. Uh, let's see here. We have a question about visiting Canada. So Artie Ute says, I would like to visit Canada. What would you recommend? I would recommend that you visit Canada <laughs> for sure. Um, so here, I think last week, a few people asked this as well. And yesterday we talked about travel and a few people asked, if you come to Canada, it's a big country. So you have to decide if you want to visit the East Coast, the Middle or the West Coast. If you visit the West Coast, you should visit Vancouver. You should visit Banff, which is a huge national park. And you should visit uh, Vancouver Island and the city of Victoria. If you are coming to the middle, which is Ontario, you should visit Ottawa, which is our nation's capital. The ca By the way, it's Canada Day on Monday. Did you know that? July 1st is Canada Day. Woohoo! We're a cool country. <laughs> um, visit Ottawa and Niagara Falls. And if you go to the East Coast, I recommend that you visit the Bay of Fundy. It would be difficult, though, to visit all those places in one trip because Canada is so vast. It is a very, very big country. Uh, let me get the next question. Here we go. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Um, Alizric says, I sometimes come across words which I don't know when I watch the news. How can I deal with that? Thanks. So it's good that you mentioned that you're watching the news because the cool thing about the news is you can read the news online and then you can watch the news on your television or on your phone. Um, what that allows you to do is if you hear a story, let's say there's a story about how there's a, the news story is that there's a huge celebration in Ottawa on Monday to celebrate Canada Day. So you see this, uh, this news story on TV and you don't understand all of it, quickly go to your computer and go to Google News and find some written articles about the huge celebration in Ottawa for Canada Day. That's what I would, uh, that's what I would do. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's see, Marta has a question. The question is, Marta says, hi Bob, what is the difference between happy and glad? Well, today I am happy and today I am glad. They are pretty much the same thing. Although what I would say is, we don't usually say I am glad. Um, we, you can, it's correct to say that. We usually say I am happy. But the way we do use glad is we say things like, well, I'm glad I brought some water out here today because I'm thirsty. Or I'm glad I brought some bug spray out today because there's lots of mosquitoes. So that's how we use the word glad uh, a lot more than uh, happy. I could say the same thing. I could say I'm happy I brought water out or I'm glad. But if you are feeling happy, we usually use the word happy and not the word glad. Thank you, Marta. That was a great question. Um, let's see here. The next one is Lolly. Lolly says, ask out and ask after. Can you explain, please? So if you ask someone out, I'm not sure if that's the context, it would mean that you are interested in them romantically. So for instance, if I was to say before I was married, and I met Jen uh, at a party and I said, I asked her out. It means that I asked if she wanted to go on a date, if she wanted to go out for something to eat with me um, because I was interested romantically. Um, so that's what ask out means. Um, in terms of ask after, it simply means that you're inquiring about someone. So if I went to the library and I asked after, yeah, we don't even say it that way. We usually say ask about now you go and ask about someone. But you can say ask after as well. It's just a little bit, I think it's become a little archaic to say it that way, to ask after someone. But it means you're inquiring uh, about that person. Okay, let's get the form in here again. I know I'm not getting to all of your questions quickly, but I will try to keep answering them. Marina says, Here's your next one, folks. Marina says, what is the difference between far and away? Um, so we use them together, first of all. So you could say that um, someone moved far and away. There's even a movie called that, I think, Far and Away. Um, but anyways, let's talk about far and away. If we were to talk about that tree over there, I would say that tree is far. I could also say that tree is far away I could also say that tree is a long ways away, okay? So that would be all the th things I could say referring to distance. So the tree is far, 
the tree is far away, the tree is a long ways away. But we use the word away differently as well. We could say, tomorrow I'm going to go away, which simply means I'm going to go out. Um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> So, next question is from Rachel Ting. Hi, Rachel. Welcome to the live uh, lesson. Rachel says, Hi, Bob. How do you use stuff? I hope it's not a silly question. So, in English, though, no, it's not a silly question. In English, we use the word stuff all the time. Like, I have a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. I have to pick up a lot of stuff in the yard. There's a whole bunch of stuff in my van that I need to clean up. Stuff is like a, g a general term for things, okay? Um, I think the closest... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the closest word in French would be. Maybe truc, but I'm not sure. But anyways, we just have stuff, right? So when I move, I have to pack my stuff. When I go to school, I don't want to forget all my stuff at home, which is just the things that I would bring that day. So that's actually a great question, Rachel, um, because you will hear the word stuff in English a lot. Um, like right now, I have all the stuff that I need to do a live stream, okay? I have all the things that I need to do a live stream. Um, so that's a great question, stuff. Man, we say that word a lot, the word stuff we in English, for sure. Um, let's see here, uh, next one is, um, let me just check for a sec. Um, so man lead. So this word, we don't use this word a lot. So it's alacricity. Alacricity. I think it should be alacrity though. Um, let me just make sure I know what I'm talking about. Um, because alacrity is like to be cheerful. Alac yeah, I think it's alacrity. Let me put it in the, um, in the chat. So morning, sir. Could you explain what does alacrity mean? So it's alacrity. And we don't need to worry about this word, people, because we don't use this word very often. But it means uh, cheerful, um, uh, brisk, cheerful, ready, um, those kinds of things. You might see it in a book, but you're not going to hear that word very often. Uh, let's see here. Next question is from Marulo. It says, my house is near the river is the same. Um, oh, is there a song by Sting called My House Stands Near the River? So a house can be or a house can stand. Um, we usually use the word be uh, or the verb be. So you could say, um, my house is on a hill. Uh, my house is out in the country. My house is beside the river. You could also say stand, but it's more, it's a more formal way to describe it. You know, my house stands on the top of a hill or my house stands near a river. Um, you can hear my voice. I'm sounding a little more formal when I say that. Um, so that's how that would work. Uh, Belkis, oops, I made a mistake. Let me click the right one. Belkis has a question. Belkis Perez says, can you pronounce these words? Hair, this is my hair, her. So um, Jen is over there somewhere. Uh, I talked to her earlier today, um, but she is not going to be in the live stream this week. I know I promised you she would be in the live stream someday. And then bowl, so a bowl is something that you eat cereal or soup out of, right? Bowl. So that was hair, her, and bowl. Uh, Warner says, <laughs> that is a great question. Warner says, how much for a sunflower? Actually, they're $1 each. Did you know that? That's what we sell them for. And I love your videos. And you all know that videos in the chat is spelled wrong, right? But thank you very much, Warner. Um, how much for a sunflower? I wonder if that's my neighbor from market watching my live stream. Um, Probably not. I'm sure Warner's from somewhere else. But yes, we do grow flowers. We have some sunflowers. Not a lot yet, though. They're starting to grow. Uh, let me get this tidied up for a moment. Um, let's see here. So this is a challenging one because there's so many examples. But Ginny says, what is the difference between of and with? Things of me, things with me. Um, so we wouldn't say things of me. We would say I have to take a lot of things with me. Um, but we wouldn't say things of me. So I'm not sure if you were using things or think because we can say, um, I hope that you think of me. That's with a K, think of me, think of me. Um, and then you wouldn't say think with me though. So I don't know, that's a, that's a challenging question. Sorry, I didn't quite answer that clearly. Um, let's see here, Jose says, Jose, 
says, what skill is more important to improve first? Listening and speaking and why? Thanks, Mr. Bob. So your most important skill to start with is vocabulary. Your next most important skill is reading. Your next most important skill is writing. And when you have those three going after a month or two, you should start listening and speaking at the same time. You should almost, whenever you listen to something, um, pause it once in a while and say it out loud. Um, but I would say they're equal. I, I think that vocab is the entry into a language. Vocabulary is the door to start learning a language. And then reading, you can read as slowly as you want to, right? So that's kind of cool. And then writing, you can write as slow as you want to. So your brain doesn't have to think really quickly in English to do those two things. But as soon as you start listening and speaking, you have to go faster. So I would do them both at the same time. Uh, let's see here. This is a, I like this statement. Louise says, good evening, Bob. Let's not only learn English, but also exchange cultures. So one thing that I think is very cool about getting to know some of you on YouTube, and I know we don't really know each other well, but I just like it that so many people from do, so many parts of the world have interacted with me and watched my videos. It makes me love the world more, okay? Should I make a t-shirt that says love the world? Yeah. Why do I wanna make t-shirts? I don't know. That's a great one though. Uh, let me tidy up here again. Um, I'm gonna skip one of these questions. Some of these are repeats, so people have asked them twice. Marlon has a question here. Marlon says, hi teacher, what's the difference between take and give? So if I uh, could hand you this bottle through the camera, I would give it to you, okay? I would give you this bottle and you're on the other side, you would take the bottle from me, okay? So if I, to give is to have something and then you are giving it to someone else. So you're saying here, you, and then uh, to take is to receive it. Hopefully that made some sense. I, I don't know if that made sense. Um, Oh yes. So, Michael says, how important is repetition in learning a foreign language even when I already know all the vocabulary in the video? Then it is less important. So, if you are understanding 90% of the words in a video or a movie or a television show, just watch more episodes of the same television show. Don't listen to it twice or three times. The only time you should listen to it two or three times is if you are working on your listening practice. You might want to listen to it a second time with subtitles on. You might want to listen to it a second time um, and slow it down a little bit. But if you are understanding 80 or 90% of what you are hearing, uh, I would just watch more instead of repeating. Um, that's what I would do, Michael. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, here's a nice one as well. Oh, I just deleted it. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I undeleted it, don't worry. My name is Jeff, pronunciation of they, their, and their, okay? So um, they are going to fireworks tomorrow night. Um, I hope that their car doesn't break down and I hope that they're good while they're there. That makes sense? Uh, they, let's see, they are going to fireworks. I'm gonna put these in the chat. Um, tomorrow can't type <laughs> they're going to fireworks tomorrow I hope that their car doesn't break down on the way and then um, I hope that they're good while they're there how's that one I hope that they're good while they're there there, there you go <coughs> excuse me uh, let's see here. Question from Locke. Uh, Locke says, good morning, Bob. Do you have some tips for English learners to deal with situations that we completely do not understand what others are just saying, especially formal situations? Um, so learn all of the polite ways to ask people to slow down or to repeat themselves. So uh, English speakers don't mind if you say, could you speak a little more slowly, please? Uh, my English is not so good. Um, or you could say, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Could you could you repeat yourself, please? So use a lot of the um, the polite 
uh, English words, say please and you say could or would. Would you be able to repeat that please? I wasn't able to catch what you were saying. Those would be great ways to do it. Even if it's formal, um, in a formal situation, if you are polite, if you use your please and thank yous, uh, people will, uh, will respond to that. Uh, Papi Chulo says, what is the difference between American pronunciation and Canadian pronunciation? To me, you sound, you both sound pretty similar. Yes, we do sound similar. Um, my understanding is that Canadians have um, a flatter sounding kind of English. There's nothing amazing about our, our, um, our accent. You can hear when I say words like uh, about or when I say uh, words like boat, I say them a little differently than an American. Um, our vocabulary is 99.9% .9 identical because Canadians watch a lot of American TV because America is our biggest trading partner for business. Um, American and Canadian English is very similar. Um, as I've mentioned before, I went to university in the United States and I had zero problems understanding or doing well uh, in America. Um, hey, lots of people watching. We're gonna keep going, but if you're new here, you should click the subscribe button below uh, and give me a thumbs up and share this video and leave a comment and I'll try to respond, but you know, there's so many comments lately. It's starting to be a challenge. So folks, if I don't answer your question, it was probably a repeat um, because I have to kind of move along here. Farooq Jabari says, I'm going to pass my IELTS speaking test tomorrow. Do you have any suggestions for me? So first of all, notice the difference in English between to take a test and to pass a test. So tomorrow you are going to take a test, okay? If you take the test and you do well, you might pass the test. So that's the difference. And my recommendation to you is get a really good night's sleep. That is probably the most important thing to do. Eat a good breakfast so that you have lots of energy uh, to think. Maybe have a cup of tea or coffee with a little bit of caffeine in it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Wagner has a question here. Uh, related to stuff and things. So what is, the, what's the difference, says Wagner, between thing and stuff? So it would be things, um, because when I say stuff, it already is plural, like I have lots of stuff, okay? I would never have one stuff, you don't, okay? Um, so I have lots of things here, so I can do a live stream. I have my laptop, I have my water bottle, I have my camera and my microphone. I have lots of things here. I also have lots of stuff here. So you can use them interchangeably in that situation. My van is really messy. There's all kinds of things on the floor of my van. There's all kinds of stuff on the floor of my van. Um, I think someone's going by in a jet ski behind me in the river, but I don't think my Wi-Fi works that far away to show you. Um, let's see here. I'm just kind of moving through some of the questions. Um, next one is from Nile Treaty. Please say you're the better rapping. Ha ha. My question is, how can I improve my vocabulary a lot? So, um, one of the best ways to improve vocabulary is to read books, uh, because, and, and read all different kinds of books. Okay. Read, um, read novels, uh, read uh, biographies, autobiographies, fiction, non-fiction, so stories that are not true, fiction is not true, and non-fiction is true. Read everything, just read, 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 and look up words like crazy. Reading is the best way uh, to expand your vocabulary. Um, let me post the, the link again, although I don't know if I'm going to get to all the questions. Um, Let's uh, get rid of that one. Matthew is asking a question here. Matthew's question is, I'm from Brazil and my biggest dream is to live abroad. Do you know how or what I can do to live in Canada and get Canadian citizenship? What kind of jobs am I likely to get? So first of all, I'm not sure exactly how the immigration process works. I would find, I would do a search for Government of Canada website immigration from Brazil and you might get some specific information. I do believe that it is fairly easy to immigrate from Brazil um, as we have really good agreements with your country. Um, but I would do that first, do a Google search and get some real information, not from, not from Bob the Canadian uh, who doesn't always know uh, what he's talking about. Let's see here. Ciao or 
Sao says, what do you think about recording a video having English conversations with some of your YouTube learners? I would do that. That would be fun. Let me think about that one. I should write that down somewhere, shouldn't I? So that I don't forget. That's a great idea. I could ask a few questions and have you answer them in video form and send me the video and then put it all together in one video. That's a great idea. Um, if we do that, ciao, you'll have to tell me how to pronounce your name. Um, let's see here. Next question is from Juan Hernandez. Let me go back to Chow though. Chow, uh, can you email me at bob at bobthecanadian.com? There's my email address in the chat. This is for Chow, the person who asked the question, what do you think about recording a video having English conversations with some of your... Could you email me and then we'll, we'll work that out. I, I, wa I want to make sure you're in it. Um, next question. Uh, I think I pasted it already. Juan Hernandez says, what part of Canada are you from? I am from the province of Ontario. Uh, and if you look on Google Maps at the city of Hamilton, I live just outside of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And the next one is, do you also speak French? I do speak French, but it is a learned language for me. So I am a bilingual Canadian officially, um, but I did not grow up in the province of Quebec or in the eastern part of Canada or in the parts of Ontario or Manitoba where people speak French. So I am not a native French speaker, but I do teach French. So. If you're a native French speaker, you should move to Canada and teach French. There's lots of jobs. Um, Kazuo Yamashita says, Hi Bob, do you have anyone who helps make videos or do you do them all by yourself? I do them all by myself, but my wife helps me with some aspects of it. She uh, makes sure that things look good. And she gives me advice all the time uh, and she helps me plan some things, but I do everything myself. My oldest son is also really good at video. So when I have questions about editing, I ask him, but I do all the video, I do all the editing, I do everything myself uh, start to end. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, let's see here, let me delete a few of these. Um, the next question is from Coach Nev. It says, hi, how do you use the phrase about to? So like, I'm about to drink some water. It's something you say just before you do something. I'm about to show you the can of bug spray. So it's something you say when you're, um, you're just before you do something, you say that you're about to do it. So I'm about to get the next question. Maybe you just wanted me to say about because when I say it, it sounds kind of funny because I have a Canadian accent. Um, Bera Wilson, hi Bera Wilson, how are you? Can you pronounce war and were? So. Uh, yesterday, I wore a coat. Um, I hope that they were warm enough. So I put two sentences in the chat. I'm not sure if they've shown up yet, but yesterday I wore a coat. Uh, I hope that they... Oh, I made a mistake there. I hope that they were warm enough. I wonder if I can delete my own. I made a mistake on that one. Let me get rid of it. Remove. Yeah, I think it's gone now. So the second one, I hope that they were warm enough. So uh, yesterday I wore a coat. I hope that they were warm enough. Tricky. Um, Venetius is here. There we go. Got all the regulars coming in now. Awesome. Regulars are people that watch the video all the time. Venetia says, hi Bob, can you tell us about education steps in Canada? Here in Brazil, we have basically five steps, infant, fundamental, middle and superior schools and postgraduate. So in Canada, you have kindergarten, you have junior kindergarten and senior kindergarten. When you are four or five years old, you go to kindergarten. So junior kindergarten, four-year-olds, senior kindergarten, um, five-year-olds. And kindergarten uh, is a German word, I think. I don't know why we use it. Um, then you go from grade one to grade eight is called elementary school or grade school. So you can use either word, but uh, I have kids in elementary school or grade school. So that's grade one to eight from until you are age 13, 12 or 13. Then you go to high school. High school is grade nine through 12. High school takes you up to age 17 or 18. So I teach out of high school. So my students are between the ages of 13, 14, up to age 18. After that, you go to either college or university. College is where you learn 
um, practical skills like filmmaking, bricklaying, plumbing, construction, nursing. University is where you go to learn things like philosophy, history, um, to be a teacher, etc. So from the bottom to the top, your kids, if you were in Canada, go to kindergarten. Then they go from grade one to grade eight. That's a grade school or elementary school. Then they go to high school, which we also call secondary school. So high school or secondary school, grade nine to 12, and then you go to college or university. <sighs> that was hard to explain. I think that was a great question. Uh, Marina keeps asking the difference between far and away, but Marina, I did, uh, I did have a look at that, sorry. I know I'm way behind uh, in the questions. Uh, Fabio has a question here. It says, could you explain the difference between achievement and accomplishment? So it is a great accomplishment that I have made 100 videos on YouTube. It is a great achievement that I have made 100 videos on YouTube. Actually, there's more than that, isn't there? And I don't think they're that great of an achievement. So we could use accomplishment and achievement. Uh, in that sense, we could use them the same, um, same meaning. Uh, Juan says, Juan from Ecuador, is it true that Canada has the best public workers in each ministry? Well, that depends. If you mean by in the government, maybe. We'll see. Oh, Enrique Alexandra has given me a super chat. Thanks, Enrique. Sometimes people like to give me a little bit of money to buy some coffee or tea tomorrow. So that's nice. Thank you very much. Um, we have good government and we have good ministers in our government, but I'm not sure I would say they're the best we do a pretty good job, I think, overall, but I think all countries have their problems. Um, let's see here. Um, Alexandra says, so is that Real, Enrique Alexandra? That's Real, right? That's uh, Brazilian uh, money, probably. Anyways, uh, Alexandra says, are you use if and whether frequently and what's the difference between it? Thanks a lot. So um, that's a tricky one, if and whether. Um, so if you are thirsty, you drink. Um, my phone's making lots of noise, sorry about that. It's all part of the lesson. Um, if I'm thirsty, I drink and I would drink whether, if I was to say, I would drink some water whether I was thirsty or not. It means that it wouldn't matter if I was thirsty. That was a really poor explanation. I'm sorry, Alexander. Uh, hopefully that made some sense to you. Uh, Luis says, Bob, what's the correct way to say I learned a new word in English or I did learn a new word in English? I would say I learned a new word in English today. Today I learned a new word in English. Um, I did learn a new word in English is not incorrect. It's just not how we would say it, okay? Um, so you could say yesterday, I did, if someone said, you didn't learn any new words today, did you? You could say, I did learn a new word in English today. So it's where you're affirming, you know, boldly or strongly that you, that you actually did something. If someone was doubting you, you might say it that way. Um, Doobie is here. Hi Doobie, how are you doing? Doobie. Hi, Bob. Today your live stream is coming earlier. Luckily, I caught it on time. Please tell me more about yourself. How many kids do you have? What old is the youngest? So my youngest kid is nine. My oldest kid is 18. Um, I have been married for 22 years. My wife's name is Jen. The farm I live on was my mom and dad's farm. And my wife and I bought it from my mom uh, a number of years ago. In the barn over there, my parents used to milk cows. We had dairy cows. And my dad passed away, I think over 20 years ago now. My dad passed away at the age of 56. Uh, he was very, very young. He had a heart attack. Um, so my mom has been on her own for a long time. Uh, and we visit her a lot because we want to make sure that we take care of her. So that's a little bit more about me. Now you know. Always nice when people ask a little bit about me. Let's do a few more here. Saeed says, hello, Bob. I've been watching your videos for a month and I think you are absolutely an awesome teacher and a normal man. By the way, I'm your fan from Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much for watching. That is awesome. Uh, and thank you for the kind words. Um, don't forget to share the videos. Um, why do I always ask people to share the videos? I don't know. This maybe makes me feel good when people watch the video. I think because I work really hard on them. And then when I see how many people watch them, it makes me... Uh, feel good. Um, let's see here. The next question is Yasin says, 
Hi, Bob. I want to know the difference between despite and in spite of. Um, despite the cold weather, it's not actually cold here, but despite the hot weather, I'm doing a live stream anyways. In spite of the hot weather, I am doing a live stream anyway. So in that situation, they would be the same. You can use them interchangeably. Um, next question is from Vlad. Hi, Vlad. From Yukutia. Should I say, did you ever or have you ever? So, did you ever go see a movie, or have you ever gone see to have you ever gone to see a movie? You can use either. It does change the sentence a little bit. Um, if I would to use, did you ever? It's very informal. So it would be between friends or family, right? Um, you know, let's see what would be a, a good question. Did you ever eat two donuts at once? Um, have you ever eaten two donuts at once? So you could use both. The second one is more polite. I would say. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I should have brought more water out. Um, so there's a question here about gerunds, infinitives, and part participles. I'm going to skip that um, because I don't want to get too deep into... I think grammar is best taught with a whiteboard where you can write stuff. It's hard in conversation. So Mario Cascante says, Hi Bob, what's the difference between by and for? Thank you so much. So they have a lot of different uses. I'll just give you a couple of, uh, of, of I'll just give you a couple example sentences. So um, I could do this live stream down by the river. Okay, so I could that would mean beside the river, by the river. Um, instead, I'm doing it up here by this tree. So that's the word by. Um, and then for I'm doing this video for you guys. Um, this video is for you. So I'm not sure that's the sense you were asking about, but that would be two example sentences of how you would do that. Uh, let's see here. The next one is from Alex. Alex says, Hi Bob, please tell me what is the difference between closed and close to? So first of all, it's closed and close to. Okay, so closed. If you go to a store and it's no longer open, if it's too late at night, the store is closed. Um, this bottle is open. Wait, I got a better example. This bottle is open now. It's closed. I closed it. Um, but when you are asking about close to, if I put this bottle here and I put the bug spray close to it, so you can see that this is close to it. Now it's far away. Now it's close to it. Hopefully that made some sense. I think it did. That was a pretty good explanation actually. Um, Let's see here, next question. Kindle Cat says, tired from work, I went to bed early versus being tired from work, I went to bed early. So last night I was tired from work, so I went to bed early. Or uh, yesterday I was tired from work. Yeah, so if you're saying that you're, yeah, when you say, see it's a different kind of, uh, you're saying something different there, okay? So if I say, uh, I was tired from work, so I went to bed early. That's a very straightforward sentence. But I could say, being tired from work makes me want to go to bed early. Or being tired from work makes me want to quit my job. So it's the, uh, the state of being tired uh, as a description. Um, let's see here. Wallace says, I'm feeling stuck in intermediate English and it's terrible. What are your recommendations for me to get out of there? Go on a trip to a country where people speak English, go for two or three weeks and go by yourself and just immerse yourself in English. I, I don't know, if, does that work? Maybe not. I'm not sure you have enough money to do that. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna delete these. Oh, this is from Lee. Uh, Lee says, how do you pronounce Ikea? Thank you, Bob. So we say Ikea. Um, I don't know how to sound it out, but when you go shopping at the big store, Ikea, it's a store where, uh, I think it's from Sweden, if, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but Ikea, that's how you pronounce that. That is the name of the store. Ziv says, how do we use the word unique? So, um, I think I'm a pretty unique person. There aren't a lot of people like me in the world, although my brother is a lot like me. My younger brother and I have the same voice and he looks a little bit like me, but he's a little bit taller. But I think I am unique. So when you are unique, you are one of a kind. Um, you are 
um, someone where there's not a lot of other people like you in the world. If I was to do a painting, the painting would be unique because I made it and there's only one. So that's what, let's see here. What should we do with this? We should report and then, um, sorry, I'm just taking care of one little live stream thingy here. We'll put that there. Let me go to the next question. By the way, sometimes some of you wonder if I'm speaking slowly. Um, tonight I'm speaking a little more quickly sometimes. Um, Lucas Ribeiro says, what's the most useful test to take? Um, any of those, because when you book a test, when you plan to take a test, let's say all of you decided that in September you're taking an English test, you will study a lot when you know there's a test coming up. You will start studying uh, two or three times as much every day when you know there's a test. So it doesn't matter to me which test you take personally, um, but you would need to figure out which one helps you if you want to get a job in a different country or study somewhere else. So that's what I would uh, look at. Uh, which one benefits you the most uh, depending on your um, situation. Let's see here. The difference, Rodrigo says, Hi Bob again, could you please speak a little bit about the difference between could, should and would? Thanks. So, if I'm thirsty, I should drink some water, okay? If I'm thirsty, I should drink some water. Um, if I'm thirsty, I could drink some water, but I don't have to. I could. If I wanted to, I could drink some water. Um, and then, I, if, let me, I'm trying to figure out another exa the example with wood. Um, I would drink some water, but there isn't any left. So there's some example sentences for you. Uh, let me talk about each of them again. Um, when you say that you could do something, it means there's a possibility that it might happen. You know, I could go to bed at 10 o'clock tonight, but I probably won't, but I could. So there's a possibility that I could do that. Um, if I should do something, it means that it would be good for me. So I should exercise every day. I should go for a walk every day. I should drink lots of water. So it's indicating something that would be um, required or that's good for you. And then would is simply, you know, uh, a conditional statement of something you want to do. So. I would drink some water, but then I might make a slurping sound and people don't like that, but I'm gonna drink some anyways. There, there was some water left, by the way. I know I said there wasn't. Um, let's see here. Uh, next question. Papichulo says, Merci beaucoup pour votre aide. No problem. Thank you for your help. Um, let's see here. Next one is, Michaelis Lima says, Hi Bob from Brazil. I've I found your channel this week. Your videos are excellent. I would like to ask if Canada's colleges offer sports scholarships and, for example, soccer. Um, I think they do. Um, I'm not 100% sure, though. They do offer scholarships. I just don't know if they offer sports scholarships. But if you want sports scholarships, the United States is the place to go. That's where the money is for sports. Um, I don't think you would get a lot of uh, scholarships uh, in Canada. I, you would need to search that up though on Google. Um, next question is, Mr. Yildire says, to learn grammar is the biggest problem for me. I study and then I forget during conversations what is the solution. Practice, 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 but don't practice the grammar necessarily. Try to learn a grammar concept and then try to identify it when you read or when you watch a television show. So let's say you've just learned how to speak in the past tense. Like yesterday I watched a TV show. Uh, yesterday I looked at um, a new car. And so you've learned the past tense. Now listen for it and identify it when you read and when you watch something. That's what I would do. Um, let's see here. How do you pronounce, this is from Igor Lima, how do you pronounce toughened up? This is a difficult word to say, so toughened. So toughened up, you know, you got toughened up. You, uh, it helped you get tough, get toughened up. So T-O-U-G-H is tough, so toughened. Um, let's see here. Um, BR says only Brazilians. There's not only Brazilians here, by the way. 
there's a lot of Brazilians here, but there are a lot of people from everywhere else in the world too. So um, anyways, next one here. Abby Manu says, hi Bob, my question is when do we say just hi and when hi there? You can use either. Hi there is a little more familiar. So if I was to say, hi there, how's it going? Um, it's, it's usually to someone you know, it doesn't have to be, but hi is very neutral. Like, hi, hi, how are you? Fine. But if you say hi there, it can have overtones of that you like the person. So if you were doing it romantically, which you, you should be careful, you would say hi there. So um, that would mean, I don't know if you heard my tone there, but if I was, let's say I, I was, it was 30 years ago and I just met Jen, I might, if I was interested in her, I might say hi there, which in, in the tone, it means that I'm interested in her romantically. So, uh, but you can use hi there somewhat neutrally as well. Like, hi there, how's it going? Um, so you just have to kind of listen to how I'm saying those two. Uh, let's see here. A um, little bit of, oh, here's a pronunciation question from uh, Gavin. Let me just tidy up here a bit, people. Um, next one here, Gavin says, how do we pronounce lower, loyal, and lawyer? So I put the shoes on the lower shelf. Um, I am a loyal um, YouTube uh, creator. So I'm loyal, that means I, I, I have a dedication. And I need to hire a lawyer. I need to hire a lawyer. So there are your three pronunciation. Um, so Robert asks about a word, this is another filler word in English. Um, we use the word actually, which means for real or that it really happened. Um, so um, yeah, so actually the other day I went to the store you don't need the word actually in that sentence. It's kind of a filler. You could just say, the other day I went to the store. Um, or you could say, let's say Jen said, oh, the blue van needs gas. I could say, actually, I put gas in today. Uh, I just put gas in this morning, actually. So it's kind of um, like it's confirming that it's really something that really happened. Folks, I am not going to get through all of these questions. There is a lot of questions. Sorry, um, I'm going to be wrapping this up in a little bit. Um, you can stay, uh, we're not done yet, but uh, it's going to take me a little bit to get through all this. Some of these are repeats, so I'm just gonna tidy up here a sec. Um, so Kyle says, tell us a little bit about English and French in Canada as official languages. I would like to know if all people speak English. So no. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting about it is if you want to be in our federal government, if you want to be in government, if you want to be a minister or a prime minister, you need to speak both languages. It's less important uh, if you want to be in provincial government, but um, generally one of the most interesting things is that students in Canadian schools learn French for 12 years, uh, either eight or 12 years, depending on what they choose. It doesn't mean they all speak French though, okay? Um, some of them are pretty good by the end of grade 12, but um, by the end of grade eight, they can recognize a lot of words um, and they only do it for like one hour a week from grade one to eight, so it's not a whole lot. Um, next question. The next question is from Andre and the question is, uh, which of these are better to improve spoken English, voice recording or video recording? Just do both. Oh yeah, if you're just out and about and you want to use your phone to record your just your voice, do that. If you can record a video and watch how your mouth is moving, do that as well. Both of those are great uh, ideas. Let's see here, how many phrasal verbs are commonly used? Uh, there's a lot. Sorry, I'll paste this in the chat for you. This is from Vanderlee. How many phrasal verbs um, in a Canadian or American English are commonly used in a native's life, just a lot. And you know what's funny about phrasal verbs is uh, until you teach English, you don't even know what they are. There's just so many of them and you just use them all the time. Um, so you don't even really know uh, what they are. Uh, you don't know that they're phrasal verbs because they're so common uh, for you. Let's see here. 
Yassine says, when we pronounce GH, is it the same as F? Sometimes. Like, sometimes if you use the word though, I'll put it in the chat, though, there's no f sound at the end. But if I say uh, tough, there is one. So <clears throat> I know that's tricky. So in those two words in chat, the first one is though, and the second one is tough. So sometimes it makes an F sound. Um, Duvi has a question. Duvi says, bonjour, how do you think about, what do you think about learning stuff? I'm not sure using learning stuff is correct. For instance, 100 new words per day, sound crazy. Um, you should be learning stuff. You should be learning a lot of stuff. Um, and stuff is used to mean almost anything. So when you're studying English, you should be learning new stuff every day. So that's how we would use the word stuff. Um, 100 new words per day, you could do 100 words per day. Yeah, just focus on it. I think that would be a great amount of uh, words to learn per day, Duvi. That would be awesome. Uh, let's see here. Nelson asks, I always get this a lot. Nelson Villamizar says, um, if I can understand 95% of what you are saying, what level of English am I at? It really depends. When I took my French test, my speaking and listening were really high and my writing was really low and my reading was pretty good. So it depends on, maybe your listening is amazing. Um, I do speak a little more slowly though. Um, but uh, if you can understand everything I say, your listening's probably pretty good, but you might be lower on speaking and reading and writing. It depends. You should take a test, find out. Let's see here. Oh yeah, tossing and turning. Just give me a sec here, I'll get to that question. This is from Enrique. He says, what's the meaning of tossing and turning? I heard this in a movie. So when you go to bed and you have trouble sleeping, and you, you're laying on one side, and then you lay on the other side, and then you lay on your back, and then you lay on your stomach, and then you lay on the other side again. We call this tossing and turning. So if you do that, you are tossing and turning. Um, let's see here. Um, next question, Kochev says, Hi Bob, is there a difference between I'm curious and I wonder? No, not really, like I wonder if I should get a new dog. I'm curious if I should get a new dog. We, we would use both. We use I wonder a lot, right? I wonder if I run out of water, I wonder if Jen will bring me more. Um, I'm curious if Jen, yeah, they are, they are interchangeable. I would use I wonder a lot more though. Um, I'm curious is more for things that you actually want to learn about. Like, I'm curious if I read two books a day in English, would it help my English? Um, so somewhat interchangeable, Kochev. You certainly would not sound funny um, if you use one or the other. You would sound like a normal native speaker for sure. Um, Luis says, Bob, what's the difference between I learned a new word in English and I did learn a new word in English? You can say either. We would probably say the first one more though. I learned a new word in English today. Um, that, that, and I think I answered it a little bit before, like if someone doubts you, you might say, I did learn a new word in English today. So if someone said, you didn't learn a new word today, you're, you didn't, you didn't, you would say, I did learn a new word today. Um, let's see here. Next question. Oh, these are big adverbs here. So um, Lulu says, hi there, Bob. What is flabbergasted and excruciating and exactly what do they mean? So I had a kidney stone once and the, I had excruciating pain. So that means that I was in pain and it was horrible, horrible pain. It was excruciating. Um, flabbergasted is when you just can't believe what someone told you. Like someone said, I'm, uh, we're expecting twins. You would, you would be flabbergasted. Like, um, I don't know if that's the best description. It's like you can't believe uh, what someone told you. That's what I would say for that. Um, and we do use that word, flabbergasted. Um, the dictionary says, surprised greatly or to be astonished, flabbergasted. So, uh, and we do use it like, oh, I was flabbergasted. We do say that for sure. Um, Locke says, let's go here. Locke says, hello, Bob, how do I know if you ignored my question? Is there an option to enumerate the questions when you copy the questions into chat and you copy the number two? No. And you know what the problem is, Locke, is there are, so far I have answered eight, 
Oh, sorry, I lost the numbers. I've answered a lot of questions and it, there's just a lot of people here and people, everyone just needs to be patient. So I'm sorry I can't go through them quicker, um, but uh, it does take a bit of time. Uh, oh, I did that one, Rodrigo. Yeah, could and should and would. Uh, did that one, did that one. Uh, where were we? Oh, here we go. We're at Igor's question. Sorry to ignore you guys and look at my computer for so long. Igor says, can you explain the term carrying out? So when you make a plan, then you carry out the plan. Obviously you can carry something out of a store, right? Like I bought um, a whole bunch of <clears throat> tools and I carried them out of the store. Like I carried them, like I, I could carry these out of the store. Um, but when you make a plan, you can also carry out the plan. Um, so. That's just another way to do it. Can you guys all wait two seconds? I just got to go and tell my kids something. I'll be right back. You can enjoy the beautiful scene behind me if you want. So normally, so normally, <laughs> so normally I tell my kids that they can't use the internet while I'm doing a live stream, but I just went and told them they could and I'll keep going for a little bit. Um, try to get a few more of these questions answered. The next one is from Wagner says, sometimes I don't understand the difference between the pronunciation of can't and can. Can you help me? So the problem is we say it really fast, right? Um, like I can't run very quickly. I can run very slowly. I can't run very quickly. So you can hear when I say it, I don't quite say, you can hear the T a little bit when I say I can't. Um, but let me see here, uh, what would be a good, if I speak really quickly, uh, you can't understand me, can't, can. So just, you got to just listen for that little T uh, that should help you a bit. Nearest says, so again, I am not answering grammar questions, just so people know. Um, let's see here. So Masayama says, when natives hear an unknown word, what letters do you write for the word? Sometimes sounds and letters are quite different in English, so I can't find the correct word. It bothers me. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's hard, right? Because you might hear, um, like when they say, look it up in the dictionary, but you don't even know what letter it starts with. It can be a challenge. So when we hear new words, we just say, how do you spell that? Like, how do you spell that word? Uh, and then people sometimes help you, which is cool. Um, I think I did the can can't already. Let's see, Ali says, so Ali, hi Bob, can you recommend a book between upper intermediate and advanced level? So at that level, my face is really glowing from the sun, isn't it? At that level, Ali, you can read the same books that native English speakers read. So go and look at the New York Times bestseller list or the Amazon bestseller list for English books and find a book that looks interesting to you and then uh, buy it and read it. Um, Igor says, let's see here. Can you please explain the difference between roughly and so-so? Um, so roughly, so when we say roughly, it means approximate. So you could say, um, you know, I measured the length of the, of the car and it was, uh, it was roughly 12 feet long or it was roughly three meters long. So it means approximately. Um, and then so-so, we use that just to, how are you feeling, so-so, like, uh, it was so-so. How was the party? It was so-so. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. It was so-so. So it was right in the middle. That's how we would use so-so. Um, tossing and turning we did, I think, from Enrique. So folks, there's no need to ask your questions twice. I will get to them. Um, it's no problem. Oh, wait, I think... John has a question here. Here's a good question. 
John Custudio says, hey Bob, how's it going? Could you please talk a little bit about the contraction, reduction, and pronunciation of we are and we're in the colloquial speech? So we're going, we're, so it's not where, it's not were, it's we're going to see fireworks on Monday. We're, we are going to see fireworks on Monday. We're going to see fireworks on Monday. Sorry, my face is glowing. The, the sun is going down over there and it's shining. It's gone below the trees. And so now it's shining right in my face, but I guess I'll just look kind of like an orange person um, for the next bit. Gavin has a question here. Gavin says, uh, Gavin Sai says, how to pronounce royal and lawyer. So um, I like the royal family. So because Canada is somewhat connected to Britain, we like the royal family. And I have to hire a lawyer. I have to hire a lawyer. Maybe I need to make a will. Maybe I was in an accident. Um, I got those questions from Igor. Um, and this one is from Gang. This is a good question. I love this question. So Gang Luo says, Bob, how many cooking style of eggs are there in a restaurant? And what are the vocabulary? So when you go to a restaurant, you can order a scrambled egg. So that's when they crack the egg in the pan and they mix the yolk and the whites together and they make scrambled eggs. You can order uh, sunny side up, which means they crack the egg in the pan, they don't break the yolk and they don't flip it. They just cook it till it's done. You can order over easy, which means they crack the egg in the pan, they don't break the yolk, they flip it once just for a little bit and then they put it on your plate. You can, we call it a broken egg where they crack it in the pan and they break the yolk and fry it. Some people call it a flat egg, but uh, you could just say, I'll just have my egg broken. They, they should understand you. But the most common are scrambled, over easy, or sunny side up. Because the yolk looks like the sun, right? Sunny side up. Um, next one. Um, let me find, here we go. I'm not sure about the answer to this one. Ent, Entisar says, which certificate would help me more to be a good English teacher, TOEFL or TEFL? Just get certified. Get as many as you can. Get the Duolingo one. Get get every single certificate you can and just get your English to be the best it can be. Two certificates is better than one. If you can do two, do it. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, let, me, let me tidy up again here. I'm just deleting some old ones. Let's see here. This one is from Fernando. It says, hi, Bob. How do native speakers use and pronounce paramount? And I found the following example, but I'm not sure if I got it right. Everybody agrees that education is paramount. So paramount means of the utmost importance, okay? It is paramount that I go for a walk every day so my heart stays in good shape. So it's very, very important that I go for a walk every day. Uh, it's paramount that, um, uh, that you get a good education. It is a very important thing in your life to do that. So paramount, that's how we would say that. Um, let's see here, tossing and turning, let me get rid of that, got that one, here we go, Luis says, I learn English, Luis says, I learn English watching sports, I watch here in Brazil, I watch CBC Hockey Night in Canada, very cool, do you watch this as well, sometimes, I don't watch a lot of hockey, don't tell the other Canadians that, because most Canadians watch hockey, um, but uh, I don't watch a lot of hockey. Um, but if I do, I watch Hockey Night in Canada, very good. Hey, um, let me get the next question, but as I'm doing that, if you're new here, please click the subscribe button below, give me a thumbs up on this video. So many people watching, there's still 340 people. Uh, I'm trying to get through as many of these questions as I can. Uh, let's see, the next question is from Gang Luo. It says, for instance, completely, definitely, there is no T sound, correct? So completely and definitely, <clears throat> I, w I would say the T sound, like definitely, completely. Complete, completely, definitely. Um, let's see here, next question. Is it possible, this is from Lolly, this is questions from a while ago, Lolly. Sorry, I hope you've gone to bed by now because it's probably pretty late there. 
Uh, Lolly says, is it possible to learn English online and become fluent? I am studying on my own. I think it is, but I think a key element is that you start to talk to someone via Skype or FaceTime in English. Um, I think it's key that you find um, that native speaker online that you can talk to. Next question is from me. Says, hi Bob, what does ruined mean? Thanks. So if this shirt had a, a hole in it, it would be ruined. I wouldn't be able to wear it anymore if it had a hole in it. If a button fell off, it wouldn't be ruined because I could just sew the button back on. But if there was a big tear here, the shirt would be ruined be ruined and I would be sad this is one of my favorite shirts so uh, let's see here Ducalmont so Ducalmont says how can we be confident while speaking English it just comes with practice and finding the right people to talk to people who are kind and willing to talk to you that's what I would say um, let's see here Igor, roughly and so-so. We did that, I think. Thanks, Igor. That was a good question. Uh, ruined, roughly. Just, just Let me just get that one out of the way. So again, folks, no need to ask the question more than once. I will get to them. Next question is from Clive. Hi, Clive. Good to see you again, Clive. Uh, Clive says, could you make a video to teach us how to listen to pronunciation and learn English from movies? Thank you. Yes, I should do that, shouldn't I? Uh, I, I will try to do that, Clive, because there's a lot of little techniques, right? Like slow the movie down. Um, if you watch it on a computer, you can hit the arrow key to go back five seconds. There's these little tricks that you can do. I'll, I'll try to make a video about that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Zachary, this is a good one too. These are great questions here, people. Zacharia says, what does it mean close call and can you give an example? So let's say I was walking along the road and all of a sudden a car came by and it missed me. It almost, I was walking and it missed me by this much. I would say that was a close call because I almost got hit by a car. So we would say that's a close call. Um, sometimes people have a lot of close calls. Um, let's see here. Wagner asked the question. Wagner says, there are people close to the river or there are people close to the river. See, I already corrected it. So it's are. There are people close to the river. Um, you, would, you wouldn't say there is people because people uh, doesn't work as, a, as um, uh, that way. It's there are people close to the river. Um, so anyways, if you go to the park over there, there's a lot of people close to the river, camping close to the river. Um, let's see here. DJ Awad says, hi, please, any advice to improve listening skills? Watch a lot of Canadian and American television. I, I know it sounds like you're, it's maybe too easy, but watch a lot of television and your listening skills will get better. And listen to a lot of music. Music is the best uh, way to improve. Uh, let's see here, Satish says, Satish says, hi, sir, I'm from India. I'm a very big fan of you. Thank you very much, Satish. Thank you so much for watching. Let's see, the next question is from Camillo says, what's the difference between throw, dump, and toss, hinder and hamper, all the while and all the time? Well, I can't, I don't think I'll get through all of them, but if I throw something, like if I take this and I throw it, I caught it, by the way, that's pretty good, but that's to throw. Um, to dump is to, if you have, a whole bunch of stuff and you just tip it over, you dump it. So let's say you have a bin full of laundry and you go like this, you are dumping everything out. So you would dump it out um, and toss and throw are the same. So I can toss this back and forth. I can toss it or throw it. Um, to hinder and hamper are to prevent someone from doing something. Um, and I think I missed the last two that the chat went by. Um, let's see here, oh, where did it go? all the while and all the time. So all the while he was, while he was watching the movie, all the while he was sleeping. Yeah, all the time. So slight difference. I like to eat um, oatmeal all the time. I don't actually, I, I just like it for breakfast. I like to eat bananas all the time. Um, so that means that regularly I like to eat bananas all the time. But all the while means during a certain event for the entire length of that event, all the while uh, a person was doing a certain thing. I can tell I'm getting a little bit tired, folks, but hey, 
Deli, Deli, Deli says when to use I think and I guess. I think I'm going to sleep in tomorrow. I guess I'll sleep in tomorrow. So they have slight differences in meaning, but you could use either pretty much. Like, um, I guess if I don't have anything to do tomorrow, I can sleep in. So like I'm supposing that if I have nothing to do tomorrow, I can sleep in. I think because I have nothing to do tomorrow, I can sleep in. There's some example sentences, not the best uh, explanation. So uh, let's see here. Let me delete that. Vitor says, getting caught up here. Vitor says, hello, Bob. Great to see you on YouTube. Hello, Bob. Great to see you on YouTube. Um, please, here's my question. Are that and which similar terms in an affirmative sentence, how do you use each of them? So this is the bottle of water that I'm going to drink tonight. This is the bottle of water which I'm going to drink tonight. So in that case, in those two sentences, uh, they are interchangeable. But you should do a little research on that. But um, So this is the uh, bug spray that I sprayed on myself. This is the bug spray which I sprayed on myself. So those are interchangeable. But there are some senses where you can't. Um, let's see here, <clears throat> get through this. Enrique is asking about, are housing prices a concern for Canadians? So yes, in Toronto and Vancouver, those cities, housing is really, really expensive. So it's definitely a concern for people. Uh, Leonardo says, Leonardo Alua says, hi Bob, when can I use I'm in and I'm on? Like on a car, in a train, thanks for all so no problem so you um you are on a plane you are on a train you are on a boat you are on a ship you are in a car you are in a van you ride on a motorcycle you ride on a bike so hopefully you got all of those uh, we really only use in for cars like i rode in a car um, you can say in a boat if it's a smaller boat too like i went in a boat the other day but um usually you go on a ship on a boat, in a boat. Yeah, those might both work. Uh, I think I did throw, toss, and dump. Let's see here. Next question is, hi Bob, is it sunrise or sunset in Canada? It is sunset. In fact, the sun just went down. Uh, it's darker out here than it might look. Um, my camera is adjusting, so that's really cool, but we just had a beautiful sunset. Um, that's why my face was glowing, because the sun was very orange and it was on my face. Um, let's see here. Venetia says, Hi again, is there any typical dishes in your city? Here in my city, Vitoria, there is the famous dish, Mokesha Kabiksa. I said that really badly, didn't I? It's a kind of boiled fish. So uh, in Canada, people eat poutine, which is French fries with gravy and cheese curds. And other than that, we just eat all kinds of food from other parts of the world. We eat pizza and pasta and um, we eat lots of Chinese food and Indian food and we eat lots, we eat everything. So whatever you guys make in your countries, we probably have it in our grocery stores. I think because Canada is a country of immigrants, we have a very rich uh, tradition of eating lots of foods from around the world. Uh, Igor says, can you indicate or can you indicate some good songs for us? Just listen to songs where the songs tell a story. I usually recommend that. I don't know any off the top of my head, but find songs uh, that tell a story because it's just a lot easier to follow along. So anyways, folks, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, there are more questions than I can possibly answer in one evening. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming. Please subscribe if you haven't and give me a thumbs up. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, there will be a new video on Tuesday. There will be a live lesson uh, Friday. I can't type Friday morning at seven, or sorry, at eight um, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there will be another live conversation and conversation and listening practice uh, next Saturday at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and that's how things work. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share my YouTube channel with a friend. Uh, leave a comment. I'll try to answer it. I'll at least try to get a heart on it for you. 
Uh, but again, thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I think we, and thanks for the super chats. Those of you that gave money, that's great. I can always buy pizza for my kids uh, or maybe get a cup of coffee on the way to work. I appreciate it. There is no obligation though to give super chats. Anyways, thank you very much. Um, let me just do one last check. I think that is everything. I think that it is time for me to just go and relax for the evening. It's a beautiful Saturday night. Uh, it's 9.03 uh, p.m. and the sun has gone down and I am going to go to bed. Thanks for watching. Oh, I spelled, I'm spelling everything wrong and then I have to backspace to correct it. Thanks for learning a little bit more English. See you next week. Have a good weekend. You are awesome people. There we go. I'm going to push the button, guys. Thanks.